Hello, my front porch friend. Just come on in the house with me today. It's one of those cold January days. Too cold to be outside on the buggy where I wish we were. In fact, I got me some hot tea. Got the water all boiled up and ready. Why don't you go fix you a cup while I'm fixing mine? Look here. Do you, do, does anybody watching right now remember these? Are you old enough to remember? <laughs> I don't even know what you call it. My grandson calls it uh, my chicken. But, uh, and I, I don't have one thing spiritual to say about it, except that he constantly drinks from the well of living water all the time. But uh, when I was a little girl in the 60s, uh, my, one of my great aunts had one of those. And so I guess this is what happens when you get old. You just want to get all those things that remind you of your childhood. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody else remembers the chicken, but I enjoy mine. Thank you very much. So I've got us some hot tea. Got me a fire in the fireplace. Got my sweatshirt on. Got my front porch friend's sweatshirt on. Do you like yours? These are the most cozy and warm. It's just perfect for days like this. If you don't have yours yet, you need to get one. I have a word I want to share with you. You know, here we are in January, the beginning of a new year. I like to just see it as, as sort of a fresh slate, a new and a fresh opportunity that God is giving us. And Here's what I feel to share with you today. It's going to affect us corporately as a group, but it's also going to speak to your life individually, and it's very important. So just stay with me for a few moments, all right? Do you remember last year when you and I talked about the word that God gave me? It was really in the spring of last year, I think, and it was a word that deeply impacted my life, and we talked about it. It was this, what I've told you to do, do it now, time is of the essence. Remember that? I believe and feel from the Holy Spirit that that for me and for really for you and I, because we are connected in this group, that that needs to be the theme of this year for 2022. What he has told us to do, we are going to do it and we're going to do it now realizing that time is of the essence. Now, first of all, before I talk to you about how this really speaks to you individually, I want to talk to you about how this speaks to us corporately. I just want us to agree together a fresh commitment of who we are as Front Porch friends. A, a commitment that just says, you know what, more than ever, I am committed to my place of intercession because that's what front porch friends are. People ask me sometimes, you know, what is the front porch? What's the front porch friends? Why do you talk about that all the time? Gladly tell you gladly. The front porch is the place of intercession. Oh, I love that. In fact, I'm just going to go out on the front porch while I'm talking about it. The front porch is the place. It's what I would just call the bridge between what is the harsh cold world out there, spiritually speaking, where, as you know, many of our loved ones are there. Many of us, we have prodigal children there. We have prodigal loved ones there. We have, we have, a, it's a, it's a messed up world. And there it is. It's all out there. But then right here, this represents the father's house. And inside the father's house is warmth and love and safety and truth and life. And you and I, you and I, we live in the Father's house. You and I have been called out from that darkness, thank God. And we've been brought into the light, the truth of our Father's house. And his love through Jesus made a way for us to do that. Now, you and I, we are sustained from his table in this house. You and I, we go in this house every day, every day. It's where we live. This is where we are. We draw our life from inside the Father's house. We, we, we eat at his table. We sit at his feet. Why? So we can hear his heart. And when we sit at his feet and hear his heart, we know what we're supposed to do. 
we're supposed to walk right here on this porch. I love the porch because it's not disconnected from the Father's house. No, it's still connected. It's part of his house. And from this porch, you and I stand and we decree to the world the word and the will of our Father. We take what he has told us to say and we bring it to this porch and we declare it to our... And I love it. It's in 2 Corinthians. I believe it's the 5th chapter, the 20th verse, right in there. Oh, it says we are God's ambassadors. God God is making his appeal through us. Then it says, we speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. So God uses us as sons and daughters to take what he's told us to say through his word. We come to the front porch of intercession. We decree to our loved ones in the world out there because there's no distance in the spirit realm. And we say, we call them, come back to God. Come back to the, we decree the word of God. And it's not just you and me doing it, honey. It's God, the Holy Ghost, the intercessor himself is making his appeal through us, decreeing the word and the will of God to the lost that need to hear it. That's why the enemy wants you out. That's why the enemy is afraid of you. That's why the enemy wants to discourage you. That's why he wants to drain and stop you because you are more effective than you know and your prayers are making more of a difference than you know. He don't want you on this front porch, but he's already lost that battle. Come on. You and I, we stay on this front porch together. This is our job. He says, what I've told you to do, do it now. He's told me to have a front porch and stay on my post. Come on, honey, I want you and me in 2022 to agree right here, standing on the front porch, that we're going to make a fresh commitment to the front porch of intercession. We're going to renew our vows to our Father to say, God, use us. Use us now to decree your word and your will to our world. Come on, it's on this front porch right here that we decree his will, but also we strengthen each other here. I'm glad I'm not on this porch by myself. I'm glad I have you. And that's why you and I meet here every week. You and I meet on this porch, don't we? You know what? I love this. My, one of the greatest, sweetest gifts God's ever given me is to just be able to come and encourage you in your faith on this porch. But also, we have, y'all have each other too. There's a bunch of us on this porch and it's growing all the time and we want it to grow. We need intercessors. And from this porch, that's why I love to read your comments. Because when y'all are commenting to each other, I love it when y'all are encouraging one another in the Lord. Sometimes I'll read some of you that are going through unthinkable places. And I'll look and you've just been bombarded by sisters and brothers that's telling you to hold on or giving you scriptures. Or say, some of you are saying, praying now. See, that's, that's the way the Lord wants this to work. We need each other. We need to encourage each other. We need to pray for each other. So on this porch, today, the beginning of a new year, you and I are making a fresh commitment to be faithful to the porch of intercession. And you know what we do? This is my favorite part too. Another one of my favorite parts is that we stand on this porch, we decree his word and his will to the world that needs to hear it. And then what do we do? The next part, we watch the road. Come on. Come on, that's what we did. We've got our eyes on the road. We're looking. We're looking. We're looking to see our answers. Come on, what's that? That's called faith. Whew, that sun's bright today. That's called faith. So we stand on the front porch. We come from inside the Father's house. We stand on the front porch. We decree his word. And then once we decree his word, ho, 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 he says his word never returns void. It accomplishes what it's been sent to accomplish. So what does that mean? I've got faith to know I'm not speaking his word in vain. No, no, no. I'm speaking it and it's going to what it's supposed to go to and it's working. So what do I do? I keep my eyes on the road. Why? Because I know my prodigal son's coming home. It may, it may, it's going to be today. You just speak by faith. It's going to be today. What? I just keep my eyes on the road. My daughter's coming home. My husband's coming home. No, my healing's coming down that road. Come on. My deliverance is coming. My, my, my health, my health is coming. I've got my eyes on the road. I'm praying. I decree his will. I decree his word. And then I watch for it. I watch. That's faith. That's what the porch is for. And that's why we're here. And today we say yes, fresh 
and renewed in Jesus' name. Now, come with me back in the house. I want to talk to you some more about you. It's something I believe I feel from the Lord he wants you to do individually, all right? There's a scripture here. It's so powerful. I've been in the scripture all week, and it's in John 15, and it says this. In fact, I think we read it last week. We were talking about joy, didn't we? John 15 says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you. Right there. See it? If you abide in me, this version says, if you remain in me and my word remains in you. Now look down here. Let me find where it's at. Yeah, it's right there. He says, you can ask for anything you want. You can ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. That's huge. And then it says, too, in Luke 18, Ask, you'll receive. Seek, you'll find. Knock, and the door will be open. Everyone that asks, seeks, receives. He that seeks, finds, and him that knocks, the door is open. Honey, that is such a power promise. We take it too lightly. So here's what I feel to do. I feel to ask you in this season, in this new year, I'm doing it with you, okay? We're going to do this together. I want to ask you, this is for the sake of our agreement, and it's so that we can target our faith. I'm going to ask you to write down no more than five right now, even though you and I both could make pages of what we're asking God for in this year of 2022. But I want to ask you the, the top five. Just Let's just focus on that, the top five. And if you want to do it less, you can, just for the concentration of it. Take, take those things. I want to ask you to write them down. I've been working on mine today. I want to ask you to write down very specifically what you want to see God do this year year. Okay. And, um, what then I want, I want you to ask you to do is this. I want to get to ask you to get you some index cards. In fact, it'd be good if you just used an index card to write those things down on too, for that matter. You know, I've told you this before, but when my daughter Lindsay was gone, when she was a prodigal and I was contending for her for those years, I would write down any scriptures. Th these are the actual cards. I pulled them out today. These are, these are some of, the, some of the actual cards that I used. These were my weapons, honey. These, these are bombs. I was going to say bullets. They're like bombs to the enemy. Why? Because it was the Word of God. I wrote down the scriptures that God gave me for my daughter. When I was praying for her and I would go read my Bible and a verse would pop off the page or somebody would give it to me prophetically, I would go write it down on an index card. And I would, I, my index cards grew thicker and thicker. I've got more than this, but they, they would grow thick, thick. And I would just, I would keep my index cards. Let me turn this around for you. I would keep my index cards like this, see, in my Bible. And, and all the time, I kept them right there, right there. And whenever I would hear bad news about her and I couldn't sleep at night because I was so worried about her, what I would do is at night, I would just sleep like this. I would take my cards and I would sleep clinging to my promises. That way, when I didn't know where she was, I was holding on to the promises God had given me. Come on. Then I could sleep and I had peace because I knew I was holding on to a word. <laughs> I had a promise. I had a word from the one who had never broken a promise. You've got a word. You've got a word from God. So don't, don't just take it lightly. Make a big deal out of it. Come on, honey. Whenever I was, she was gone. This, I just looked down at this one right here. This one, this was one of my promises for Lindsay. And it says this. And I would, what I'd do is I'd take my index cards and I'd pray them. I'd just flip them. I would flip them like this, one after another. I'd go up there and I'd just pray, pray, pray. Then I'd just start reading every card out loud, out loud, out loud. And then I would just decree it. This one says, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. For your work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord. And they shall come again from the land of the earth enemy that's your children and there is hope in your end says the Lord your children shall come again to their own border hallelujah come on that's somebody's promise watching me right now somebody right now needs to claim that word out of Jeremiah it's Jeremiah 31 starts with verse 15 that's your word 
That was my word. I wrote it down. I decreed it. I fought with it. I stood with it. I shouted it. I spoke it. I slept with it. And it came to pass. Here's another one. Jeremiah 32, 27. I would just decree it and fight declaring, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I would just decree it and say, God, there's nothing too hard for you. Lindsay's not too hard for you. This situation's not too hard for you. You know what to do. Do it, God. You know what to do. That's the power of the word. One more. Let me look at this one. Oh, <laughs> whoa. I feel this is for somebody watching right now. This was one of my promises. And it said, God said to me, now this wasn't out of the Bible. This was a prophetic word somebody gave me. And it says this, I will do in a moment what would have taken 20 years of counseling. <laughs> I believe that's your word, somebody watching right now. God is telling you, I will do in a moment what would have taken 20 years of counseling. God can do that because there's nothing too hard for him. So I'm telling you this. I mean, I could go on and on. My stack is vast. Go right down to what you're asking for today. Write down the scriptures that God has already given you. Be prepared to get more scriptures. Keep, your, keep plenty of index cards handy, all right? But write down the ones you already have that coincide with the request that you're believing God for. This year of 2022, you and I are going to target those prayer requests that you have. I want to ask you that every day, every day, you take out those index cards. And every day, you decree what you're asking from God, and you decree the promise he's given you concerning it. You may say, well, Karen, I don't know, I don't know if I've heard a particular promise. Well, I start here. Start by asking God for one. God's, what? tell me what you're saying about this, and he'll answer you. The next thing is, what scripture already goes with it? Because if you're praying for the salvation of a loved one, honey, you've got gobs of scriptures to pick from already. So you can already find what's been written and just start writing scripture. For one thing, you can just say, God, your word says I can ask for anything. And I can have it when I abide in you. Now, the key to that, you can't ask for something that's outside of his will, obviously. You know, God says in James 5, 14, when you come and you, you ask, this is our confidence. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So, don't go asking for somebody else's husband. Ain't going to happen from God. Don't ever ask for something outside of his will. Never going to happen. But what he will do, what he will do, he responds when you have heard his voice, heard his promise, and decreed his work, that's when you get action. So write that word down. Decree it out of your mouth every day. Will you do that? Even for me, I've been looking at this for myself. So I've been writing today, and I'll just share with you. This is very personal, but I'll tell you, because you are my friend. And I'm asking, I've kind of gotten my, my down to three right now that's the most important to me. Some things in my family I want to just see God do that only God can do. So I've got my scriptures. Oh, do I have scriptures? So I'm decreeing those things over my children, over my family, and I'm going to target that. I want to see God do this in 2022. Some of it just looks impossible. But see, then I've got a promise. But with God, all things are possible. So next to my request, I'm laying out my promises. With God, all things are possible. Get detailed. Get, don't just stay real general. God bless my family. No, get very specific. Call their name. Call the situation. Ask specifically, is it you and your daughter-in-law? Do you need your daughter-in-law's relationship healed? I just heard that for somebody watching. Put her name down and target that in prayer. Say, God, this year... I'm going to have a wonderful relationship with my daughter-in-law that we will be knitted in the spirit and heart like Ruth and Naomi were. And go get that verse out of, out of the book of Ruth. Whether thou goest, I will go. Whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Go get those kind of promises and begin to decree that over them. All right? Next thing I'm believing for, first for me, is just family. I want to see my family unified. And I want to see your family unified. I want to see your family strong and operating in, in, in such power of prayer and focus and no divisions among you. I'm believing with you for your family. And I'm what you believe with me for mine, okay? And my family's great. I mean, I'm blessed and I'm thankful. I just want to see it increased. I just want to see it increased. Now, second thing I'm believing for, I want to organize. I'm tired of any area of chaos. 
in my house. Come on. Messes, storage rooms, boxes of junk, drawers that need to be cleaned out, room places. Come on. At this point, here's what I feel. What I've told you to do, do it now. Time is of the essence. I don't have time to be distracted by chaos. And you know what? I'm in a place of just simplifying and getting rid of junk. Come on. Let's just get ready to leave this world. Let's just get ready. Let's just say, God, I just want to simplify, simplify. So I'm decreeing, God, help me in 2022 to be organized and get rid of any area of chaos in my life. And I'm decreeing, I love Psalms 39, uh, verse 4 through 7. Go read that. I don't have time right now, but in the New Living Translation, Psalms 39, verse 4 through 7. And saying, God, help me remember how brief my time on earth is and help us to make the best use of our time and not waste it in chaos and frivolity and things that don't matter. All right. I love I love First Corinthians 14 and verse 33. And it says this. God is not the author of confusion. So when there's chaos, God's not there. He's not in confusion and chaos. So I want order in every area of my life. So I'm calling for that. 2022, I'm calling for order in Jesus' name. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write down all the corresponding verses to decree that with them. Last thing for me, I'm believing for health and strong health. Now, I thank God for the health that I have. I believe in God for the full restoration, everything with, with, with even just silence, different thing. I am believing God for the fullness of strength in my body. Come on, I love this. This is for you and me both. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19 says, Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, you and I, we've got a job to do. And I believe, I'm believe i believing with you, sweet friend, for healing in your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And God needs you here to pray on that front porch right there. He needs you out there praying. So I'm believing with you. That your physical body is renewed. And the Bible says, and remember in Isaiah, he says that if we wait upon the Lord, he will renew our strength. We will mount up on wings as eagles and run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Cindy Hill, my sweet friend, you hear that? That's our verse, isn't it? Because we're going to wait on the Lord. He's going to renew our strength. Would you agree with me that our strength is renewed, even just like our youth, that we can pray strong. We're going to stand strong and we're going to believe strong. All right, my friend. I just looked at my time is up, isn't it? I want you to stand with me in firm agreement for focus. Here's what we're going to do. Listen good. Three words I have to tell you. Jesus, God, I believe God told us what I've told you to do, do it now. Time is of the essence. What does that mean? We're going to identify what he's told us to do. And what that looks like is this. We're going to clarify what he told us. We're going to prioritize those things. And we're going to activate, clarify, prioritize, and activate, clarify, prioritize, and activate. That's going to be what we're going to do this year. We're going to take what God told us to do. Lord, we're going to have, I need clarity to do only what you've told me to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Give me clarity on doing only what you've told me to do. Targeting my prayers, targeting my request for what matters eternally. Give me clarity, God then help me to make that the priority of my life. And I'm ready to move and activate. I'm going to do my part. And God's going to do his. His part, he does the stuff that's impossible. I'm going to do things like intentional effort with my family. I got to get in here and clean out a bunch of mess. And the third thing, I got to be a good steward of my body and start exercising. Jesus help us. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that in obedience to the Lord. We're going to do our part. And he's going to do his part. Amen. What does that mean? We're going to have a great year in 2022. When you and I talk about this next year, about this time, we're going to say, look at the victories. We can pull out our cards and say, look what God did this year. Let's believe he'll answer those requests so quickly. We'll have to make new ones. We'll have to lay, write out new requests before this year is over. Will you believe with me for that? In Jesus' name. Lord, here we are. I'm going to go out on my front porch to pray. Father, me and my front porch, friends. Here we are. We're standing on this front porch of intercession. Tonight, God, we make a fresh commitment to you. Lord, we make our commitment to you that we are your ambassadors. We're your daughters. We're your sons. Use us tonight, God, and use us for your glory. Strengthen my front porch friends, God, to have faith. Let them see their prodigals brought home in 2022. Let them see their marriages restored this year, God. 
their financial needs beyond met, God. I pray for renewal in their body, in their soul, and in their spirit. May they be strengthened in joy to finish and do what you've told us to do and help us to do it now. No more excuse, no more delay. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friend, I love you so much. I look forward to talking with you again next week. Until then, clarify, prioritize, activate.